today I'm going to make some backgrounds or some book covers actually is what I'm using them for but you can do whatever you want. You can do these on a journal page. You can make it into a book cover. Um, you can um, just make it as a page and a mini album. You know, whatever. And I've done things similar to this before. I think I did a whole thing on fusing paper napkins using plastic wrap. You, you know, you can look back in the other videos if you want to see that. And, and this is very similar. But I'm using um, Wonder Under instead of plastic wrap. Which, okay, it's a little more expensive to buy the Wonder Under. But, uh, <coughs> excuse me. It is, um, it's a little more reliable for a book cover because I really need them to be strong and everything needs to hold together, you know. So, um, for this, here's what you're going to need. Okay, you're going to need some Wonder Under. And you can get it in, they have it at the craft store sometimes in a thing like this. And if if it's not this Pellon brand or whatever, it won't be called Wonder Under. It'll be called something like, you know, fusible webbing or fusible interfacing or something like that. But um, that's what it is. If you get it at the craft store, you can buy it by the yard. Or I usually just buy the whole bolt. And it'll look something like that. And then you can get, you know, you can get just the piece that you need or buy the whole thing. And they usually have a separate rack at the craft, I mean, at the fabric store for their um, interfacing. It'll have the, the fusible Wonder Under interfacing and then just the regular, you know, interfacing lining stuff that you use for sewing. And you can find it there. A little more expensive than plastic wrap, but it is more... Um, it's sturdier and more reliable, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You're also going to need some parchment paper like this, which you can get, you know, at the grocery store or at Walmart over where they have the foil and stuff. Or you can use grocery sacks or um, even if you have just some of this kind of craft paper, you know, craft with a K that brown paper. Just something like that to iron over. Um, you're going to need that. And what else are you going to need? You're going to need some pretty papers. Now these, these I've used, this one I used a bunch of different um, napkins and tissue papers and some other decorative papers, but they were all kind of thin, you know, really lightweight, thin bodied. And for the back on this one, I used fabric, I used muslin. That's optional. You can use paper on the back as well, like I did on some of the others. So um, for decorative papers, you can use, you know, thin bodied tissue papers, napkins, things like that. You can also use your um, drop paper, you know, when you're painting and you put that piece of paper down to catch all your paint drips. You know, that. And then you keep it because everybody has told you to keep it because you can use it, but then you don't know what to do with it. This is what you do with it. You know, one idea anyway. So you're going to need some of that if you want to use it. And that's what I used on these. Mostly anyway. There's some extra pieces in there. And these, I have not put anything on the back. I actually fused these with um, plastic wrap instead of the fusible webbing. So <clears throat> I'll have to, have to fuse something else to the back of those. And this one, this is probably the one we'll do today. Um, this is a large sheet, and is, it is with the fusible webbing, and I used just pages from magazines. Because, you know, I rip out pages that I like, and sometimes I rip them out for the sole reason that they have pretty colors on them. Sometimes it's the image, sometimes it's the color or the pattern, you know, just, just kind of depends. So I just pulled out a handful that had bright, vivid colors that I really liked. And that's what I used on here. 
and so I use the fusible webbing so the back side of those magazine pages is what you're seeing here and then I took some scraps of a dress pattern you know that I just tore some of that and laid over the back and then heated it because it had the, the webbing on it. So, and you know what? Every time I look at this, I think, huh, I might like the back better than the front. I don't know. <laughs> They're both pretty darn cool looking. Um, but after everything was dry, then I just took it up to my sewing machine. And then I happened to have purple thread in the machine, so that's what I used. And then I just sewed. As you can see, I sewed in that crazy, what do they call that, free range sewing, free arm, free motion, no, free motion, well, whatever. I call it free range because that's the first thing that pops out of my mouth when I think about it. But that's all I did. And then I did, at the end, I sealed it with just a thin layer of Mod Podge. But that makes a good, flexible, sturdy book cover. So that's what we'll do today. Okay, first thing you need to do, okay, here's, <laughs> here's where I got the idea. I pulled out my ironing board, and which I'm about to need a new cover. I go through ironing board covers like crazy. I pulled out my ironing board because I watched this video the other day, and I saw this gal who's, I will try to find her video and, and put a link, and she was making paper out of plastic grocery sacks, you know? And she just fused them together between some parchment or some brown paper. She just put layers and layers. She fused them together and they made these wonderful sheets of paper that she then painted and it just looked kind of like parchment because it was all textury and cool. I tried it following her instructions. That's what I got. I could not have failed <laughs> any worse than that. <laughs> okay, she used white bags. I had brown. I don't know if that was the difference. I did try it with white bags and no better results. I thought maybe my iron was too hot, so I turned it down a little bit, and then it didn't fuse. It wasn't hot enough. So I, I don't know. I don't know what the problem is here, but... Um, I did not succeed in following her instructions. I'll try again another day, but anyway, that's what prompted me to get out my ironing board and stuff. And then after that failed, I had to make it worth my while because I had all the stuff out, you know. So I decided to just do some fusing. Um, but you can also use, if you have a thing like this, you got something like this, right? This is your little bin of scraps. And these are the um, paper towels that I use when I'm painting to wipe stuff up. These are great to make fused papers out of. Baby wipes, baby wipes don't work so well. They must have a polyester content or something in them because they melt. So, um, yeah, baby wipes not so good for this, but paper towels are fine. Or any of your scraps and pieces are good. It's a good way to use them up. So you want to take a piece of Wonder Under, <coughs> cut it to the size you want, and I, I cut mine kind of small so that it would fit in my camera frame. And it's got two sides. This is the smooth paper backing side. And then this one, you can feel it's kind of rough. This is the webbing. You want, this is the, this is the business side. So you want uh, this side up. This is what you can put your papers on. You also are going to need maybe some of this. If you don't have this, you don't have to run out and buy it special. Although I really do recommend that you keep it in your craft room because it's awesome and you may need it at some point. It is Fast Finish Decoupage Glue by Beacon. comes in a thing like this. It's not cheap. It's ten bucks. Um, you can get it at Hobby Lobby. I've seen it at Joann's. Michaels carries Beacon's products, and I've never seen this particular thing there. But the, maybe just that they're out. I don't know because they do carry Beacon stuff. So you can get it at the craft store, or you can get it online. 
and I usually put mine in a spray bottle. This is that same stuff, that fast finish decoupage, but I like it in the spray bottle. And I'll show you what is so awesome about this in a minute. I think I've shown this before, but I think you need to re-see it because um, it is spectacular and I need coffee. Hang on. Now, I've got my little thing going on here. Yeah, I've got some magazine pages. I pulled these out because they have kind of the same color scheme going on. So, I thought I would use them. And I don't want to do strips like I did in those other ones. I want to do chunks. So what I usually do is just start tearing them in wide strips. Just like that. Randomly. Doesn't matter. And then, I'm not going to do that. You can just take and make random chunks. Try not to give it too much thought or they're going to come out way too neat and orderly. So there we go. And I usually start, like I pretend like I'm working a puzzle and I start with the corners. And here's the reason I do that. I don't like my hard edges showing in the body of the piece. Uh, let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about. If you see on here, all of the edges are torn. There's no straight line hard edges. And that's just personal preference. That's just what I prefer to do. So I make sure that I start with the pieces on the edge or in the, in the corners because then I can leave that intact, go ahead and put that there, work my way around, and then I have to start, you know, peeling off, doing this little thing. You know what I'm saying? And then I throw that away. So, that's what I do. I just go through my little stack here and just randomly pick out some corners and edge pieces and start laying them out and let's see now I've only got what I have three three pages I may not have enough we'll just see as we go so I may have to cut some more but I just find me some corners and get going. I can't find another corner. Surely there's another. There it is. Do I want that one? I don't really don't think I do. I'm not sure. Nope, I want this one. And I want that one there. I want that one there. Is that what I want? I think so. And yeah, you have to talk to yourself through the whole process. That's part of that's part of the instructions. You must talk to yourself the whole time you're doing this. Okay. I think we'll start like that. Now here's what I, this is why I like using the Wonder Under. And this is what makes it, for me, worth the little bit of extra that you pay for it over using plastic wrap. I have a small craft iron upstairs that would really be better for this. But the problem with that is that it's upstairs, <laughs> and I'm not, and I'm not going to get it. So I'm using my regular iron, and you just want to be really careful not to lay your iron down on the Wonder Under itself, because it will stick to your iron, and then you're going to have all kinds of problems. But what I, can, what I like to do is get my little piece situated, just barely heat it. It is now stuck down, won't move. It's not stuck down completely because you have to iron it really good in the end. But this way I can turn my page and work on my other areas, you know, sticking stuff down as I go without getting messy, gluey hands. So this is just nice and easy. 
Well, kind of. That one stuck before I wanted it to. And don't worry about these white torn edges. We're going to do something with those when we're done getting everything stuck down. Okay, so that's what we do. We just keep sticking. And I'm probably going to go speedy camera here in a minute so that um, you won't be bored to death just watching me do this over and over again because, ouch, don't burn yourself. Okay, once you get all your edges around, then, then comes the fun part. Then you can start filling in and make sure that you remember not to, not to have everything at 90 degree angles. You know, make sure they're wonky here and there because this is a collage and that's what it's all about. And I do want to try to cover every square inch of uh, Wonder Under. I don't want any of it left showing. Okay, once your whole page is covered, then you can give it a good thorough ironing and you do want to um, be careful your iron may end up smudging some of the ink the heat will cause the ink to kind of melt so this might be a good time to go ahead and put your parchment paper or your brown paper down and iron over it Just so your iron won't get goobered up. Mine's already pretty much goobered. But when I get through, I'll clean it good. I usually just take a like a microfiber cloth and a really thick one and then wipe off any of the stickies from it while it's still hot. Or if you have some of that iron cleaner stuff, you can use that too. This parchment has gooey stuff on it, which kind of defeats the purpose of the parchment, but I'm not wasting another piece yet. So, there we have it, yeah? Now, next step is to kind of glue down some of those loose ends after you have a sip of coffee. So I'm going to take my fast finish <coughs> decoupage glue and I'm just going <coughs> to start spraying. This, if you're using thin tissue papers, it works great because it just soaks right through and you're good to go. But for these papers, you may have to kind of lift up some of your loose ends to get underneath. But the fabulous thing about this glue is it is uh, very thin, so it's perfect for really thin papers, you know, tissue papers, mulberry papers. It's like the best glue ever for those. But it also is not sticky at all. I don't know how it works. It's just kind of magic because, you know, I can go around here and I've got my hands in it, you know, all over the place. And then when I'm done, they're not sticky at all. I mean, there's no glue residue to peel off. Nothing. Which makes me think, okay, so how does it work? I, mean, I don't know. Okay. If you bend your sheet like this, you can kind of see the areas that need to be glued.
And this doesn't have to be perfect. Um, because I do, you know, in the end, I'm going to put some Mod Podge on it. And that's going to, that's going to make up for whatever loose ends I've missed. So I'm not worried about covering every single space. Now at this point, <clears throat> I do want to go in and I kind of look at the composition here. And I've got all of these nice, you know, pieced pieces here, but my edges are a little bit too uniform. So, to fix that, I can just go in and lay on some random pieces here and there just to kind of give it a more pieced, random look. And just use your glue. It dries really fast, so you have to respray often. There we go. Okay. Now, see that's better. Let me just break up some of that uniformness that we had a little too much of. Okay. Now, I guess ideally you would probably want to let the glue dry hit it with your heat gun, dry it faster, whatever. But I usually just iron it down. Again, making sure that you don't get any of the glue on your iron. Especially if you also use your iron for clothing, which I do about once every decade. My wardrobe's mostly t-shirts. I don't have a huge need to iron my t-shirts. We think. I think it's pretty darn awesome. Okay, let me make sure that is good and dry. Before we go on to the next step, which is blending in some of those white torn edges which is totally optional if you like the white torn edges leave them and with these magazine pieces that I've shown or that I've used they're actually okay because I've got quite a bit of white in the magazine pieces there's a lot of text in there but I will show you how I take care of those and you can use um, pretty much any kind of marker I would probably use either like an alcohol based or an India ink um, water based marker it might cause you some problems when you go to put your Mod Podge on um, <clears throat> you know because you certainly don't want you don't want it to smear and get all over everything when you're Mod Podging which sometimes water based markers will do so what you can do is go in and I'm going to use some um, pit pens, you know these, what are these, Faber-Castell, they're just um, India ink markers, and I'm going to go in and just smear some on there, and I'm going to pick some colors, I'm just going to pick some crazy colors maybe. What happens if we use purple? So yeah, we'll just go in and just randomly kind of color and smear. And this is why these markers are so awesome because they do they do let you blend. My memory card filled up, so while that was downloading, I went ahead and finished just putting a little bit of color on all of the white torn edges, which kind of helps the whole thing to blend and 
meld together. It just looks more like a uniform piece. Plus it also looks a little bit, um, I don't even know how to say it. It's not so much pieces of magazine stuck together. It looks a little bit more, not really painted, more handmade, I guess. I don't know what I'm trying to say. It just looks better, basically. So, to me, anyway. So that's what I did. And these are the four colors that I used. Just um, random dark colors. And I basically just kind of pulled some from this pinata. Because he was kind of like the lonely source of color on the whole page. So I added some more of his colors to make him make a little bit better sense. Which I think turned out quite nice. Okay. Now... Um, next thing we're going to do is the back. <laughs> 